Hello, everyone, and, and welcome to today's webinar, Removable Dental Appliance Hygiene in Under 60 Seconds with Dr. Mark Watherspoon. My name is Bernie Jaroslow. I'm the marketing manager for Whitmix, and I'd like to begin uh, with a couple housekeeping items uh, before Dr. Watherspoon uh, starts. Uh, first, if you have questions, and you may, uh, please write them down in the questions uh, section down at the Q&A section down at the bottom of the Zoom screen. And just write them down. We will answer them, but we're going to wait until the end of the webinar. We'll do it then. Next, if you're a CDT or dentist, uh, the webinar is approved for one hour of CE uh, toward your recertification. Uh, you will receive an email within one to two days, and sometimes it takes two days, but you will get it from us. It will thank you for attending, but also explaining uh, just how you will receive the, the credit. Also, the webinar is being recorded. Uh, we have it is evergreen. We have our webinars and hold them for many, many years. Uh, they're either on the Whitmix website or uh, and I should say our YouTube channel. So they're always there. You can rewatch them. Uh, you can always uh, take the, the tests um, after and you'll, you'll be able to see it or anyone else that uh, any of your, your uh, co-workers uh, can watch the webinar as well. So today I'm gonna read something. Today after reviewing the poor standard of removable dental appliance hygiene and, and home care, you'll discover a truly unique way to clean, store, and protect all types of removable dental appliances, including retainers, aligners, splints, uh, night guards, sports mouth guards, sleep appliances, and dentures. Dr. Mark Watherspoon is a successful general, a general dental practitioner who wears a number of hats. Uh, Mark has had many years in private practice as a principal and practice owner, as well as experience in the public service, the military, and even corrective services. He firmly believes in establishing best or practice oral hygiene routines for his patients and educating other health professionals and the public as close to the, I'm uh, sorry, as to the close link between oral health and general health. Mark is an adjunct senior lecturer and clinical team leader in portable dentistry. CSU, and this year was made an honorary member of the Dental Hygienists Association of Australia. So, Dr. Watherspoon, that's all I've got. Uh, so, if you're ready, let's let's talk about uh, about hygiene with removable appliances. Thank you. Thank you, Bernie. Is that coming up with it my is. You're fine. first page? Wonderful. Okay. Well. Uh, thank you very much, Bernie. And uh, before we start, though, I would like to pay my respects to the traditional owners of the lands from which this webinar is being delivered, the Wiradjuri people. And I think it's really quite wonderful to know that for, you know, tens of thousands of years, uh, people have been gathering in small groups, probably from my exact location, uh, not far from the banks of the Murrumbidgee River in regional New South Wales, uh, gathering to share knowledge uh, and new ideas. Uh, and uh, firstly, though, a very brief um, re pre-recorded introduction. A very warm welcome from down under in Australia to all corners of the world. I'm Dr. Mark Wotherspoon to take a very different look at an old challenge that is to provide professional oral hygiene instruction for our patients in the surgery so that they can better look after their removable dental appliances at home. And the backdrop is that the world is finally waking up to the direct link between oral hygiene, oral health and general health. We do need to reflect on the very poor standard of dental appliance hygiene and ask ourselves, can we do better? And I know we can do better. We only have to look at the products and the tools that we've been recommending they haven't really changed in over 50 years. And really this brush is just a funny little variation on a toothbrush with its long handle and small head designed perfectly to clean teeth and gums inside the mouth, but not so well developed to wash and disturb biofilm with these slipping little odd shaped pieces of plastic and metal often held in, a, held in our fingers 
over a bathroom vanity or hard bench. And after our patients or the parents of our patients have finished the task, they store the removable appliance in one of these uh, tiny little sealed jam incubators. I know we can do better, we will do better. So let's now dive into providing professional oral hygiene instruction for removable dental appliances in under 60 seconds. So, um, how to formulate our science-based dental appliance hygiene guidelines? Well, we are going to have a look at uh, what the research says about the biofilm that is growing on the dentures and sports mouth guards, and also what the research says about how well our patients are doing with their home care, and a bit of a spoiler alert, they're not doing too well, and that this is uh, directly impacting their general health as well as their oral health. We will look uh, at some dental and non-dental industry recommendations, what our profession is saying, and you may be shocked as I was to learn how mixed these messages are. Uh, we will then move on to the science and finally pull all of these recommendations together to come up with our chair side oral hygiene instructions that our patients can easily understand and easily follow uh, and are readily affordable. Here I am down in Melbourne in the High Performance Centre for the Rebel Women's Professional Rugby Team. Uh, I'm giving a presentation on the importance of sports mouthguard hygiene and storage. And I'm sharing a US study of American football players that cultured the microbiota growing on their mouthguards. And they found over 350 different bacteria and well over 100 different moulds, uh, one of which is actually a strain of penicillin. The bad news is that this strain of penicillin and a few of the other molds are causative agents of asthma and necrotizing esophagitis. And not surprising, the study concluded that protective athletic mouth guards are contaminated by microorganisms that have the potential to produce oral and systemic diseases. They should be sanitized daily and changed when they become sharp or jagged. And a different study in the British Journal of Biomedical Science determined that denture plaque does actually differ a little from dental plaque and can contain higher levels of golden staph and candida albicans. The study reported that we, what we already know, and that is that inadequate denture hygiene increases the risk of dental caries, periodontal disease, and denture stomatitis. But the study also reported what we already knew as well, and that these microorganisms are implicated in endocarditis, aspiration pneumonia, and gastrointestinal infections, and that dentures act as a reservoir for these germs. Finally, effective oral hygiene is important to control denture biofilm and contributes to the control of associated oral and systemic diseases. Now let's have a look at an article in the BDJ that looked at an audit of denture cleanliness five different cleanliness scores, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, with 88% of dentures assessed landing in the two dirtiest levels. And a review of the clinical notes showed 37% did not uh, include any oral hygiene instruction, and that those with notes had no standardization of advice given. And we will see a little later that this is actually a global problem. Backing up this audit is a report in the International Journal of Dental Hygiene, that informs us that denture wearers' attitudes and habits do not conform to recommended guidelines. So clearly, we are not getting the denture hygiene message across well enough. And I would add that it's the same for all removable appliances. But it did say that a combination of mechanical brushing plus chemical agents achieve the best results. Uh, and much more on this uh, later. So what were the habits and attitudes? Uh, most people use a brush to clean their dentures, but some people only brush a couple of times a week, which scored poorly on the cleanliness index, as you would expect, whilst those who brushed uh, three to four times a day showed excellent cleanliness. 30 to 60% brush once a day, only a quarter of denture wearers use a soaking tablet regularly, and over 50% leave their dentures in at night, with females more likely to do the right thing. Now in this 2013 study of partial denture hygiene knowledge, it determined that there was no consensus on what level of denture hygiene knowledge should be expected. 
but that there were no legitimate there was no legitimate reason for failing to deliver full instructions to your patients. This study has also also determined that when giving hygiene instructions just verbally, then this was significantly less effective than verbal plus written instructions. So obviously our patients do actually read our prepared handouts. The study also determined that although most dentists acknowledge aftercare was important, only 22% arranged follow-up review appointments. Not, not surprising was the recommendation for regular dental exams, and this also presented an opportunity to reinforce denture hygiene. The study concluded that patients are confused and uninformed, and although the patient was re responsible for maintaining oral and denture hygiene, it was clearly the obligation of the dental professional to educate and motivate. Certainly this study suggests there is a lack of knowledge and awareness on denture hygiene among the individuals taking part in this audit and that the dental professionals need to do better. And maybe, or rather probably, we as dental professionals are also confused. And no wonder when we look at this Cochrane review and determine that even with all of the extensive research conducted over many, many years, only a surprisingly small number of studies was found to be suitable for inclusion in this review, because all presented a high risk of bias, mainly due to problems associated with selective outcome reporting. So we really have to be careful when sorting through the dental research and the dental science, and that's why we will drift outside the dental profession for, for some of our advice. And all of this has been confirmed more recently at the 2018 FDI World Congress in an address by Foundation Chief Executive, Dr. Nigel Carter, that advised, people with dentures do not know how they should be cleaning them. And that with the variety of available information online, it is no surprise people are confused. And also that the amount of inconsistent and unproven advice about cleaning and maintaining dentures is frightening. He also reminds us that poor denture care and hygiene can pose a real threat to both oral health and general health. So maybe we need to get back to basics. What materials are dental appliances actually made from? What materials are we trying to clean and store hygienically to benefit our patients? So let's start with our most common material, polymethyl methacrylate or PWMA, which is also known outside of dentistry as plain old acrylic or acrylic glass or perspex. First developed by a couple of British chemists in early 1930s, uh, and it starts as a petrochemical out of the ground and through a number of processes moves to acetone, then methacrylate, and then synth synthesized into its polymer form. And this material is very, very tough. In fact, dental applications are only a small part of its story. PWMA has even been used for submarine periscopes and aircraft windscreens. And it was actually from this last application that the true nature of its biocompatibility was recognized when ophthalmologist Harold Ridley compared war pilot eye injuries from splintered windows of the Spitfire made from PWMA with splinters from the hurricane, windscreens made from glass. The PWMA splinters caused scarcely any rejection. And in fact, Ridley took this knowledge and went out uh, in late 1949 to implant the first intraocular lens made from perspex. 1934, as best I can discover, was when the powder liquid acrylics, similar to today, started to be used for denture construction. Let's now move to metal-based dentures and chrome cobalt. Again, very strong and tough and biocompatible. And to highlight these characteristics, we can see that this metal is also used in joint replacements and jet engine components. Interestingly, a cobalt, cobalt chrome heart valve was first implanted in 1960 and lasted over 30 years, proving its high wear resistance. Nickel is often added to improve ductility and help prevent fractures, but of course we need to be aware of potential nickel allergies. Then of course, we have wrought stainless steel clasps, which are corrosion resistant because they have an atomic level surface film that acts as a barrier 
And this is due to the added chromium, about 10%, plus some nickel and a few other trace elements. Now a very different material for the second most prevalent removable dental appliance after dentures, EVA, used to make sports mouth guards, and again, a material that is used far, far more in non-dental applications. EVA is most often used in footwear, floor coverings, and flexible hoses. EVA is ideal for contact sports mouth guards. It's flexible, tough, crack resistant, and relatively easy to work with. It does, however, have some downside, and this is important for how we care for these sports guards. It is sensitive to heat, and it does have poor resistance to abrasion and tearing. So no cleaning with toothpaste or any type of hard brush and storage needs to be protective and room temperature. This close-up vision of EVA shows the irregular surface and clearly simply rinsing or even brushing on its own is not going to be effective. We will need a cleaning agent like soap that works with soft mechanical brushing to disturb the biofilm before it is rinsed away with fresh water. Just look at the mold collecting on the right slide. And we really do need to take this mold issue on mouth guards a lot more seriously than we do. Here we look at a working group put together in the USA in 2006 to come up with guidelines on how to deal with mold after severe storms and hurricanes. The National Center for Infectious Disease, it, uh, the National Center for Environmental Health and the National Institute for Occupational Health and Safety. Clearly the US government is taking mold seriously as a health risk. It determined mold needs moisture and nutrients to grow. A damp, warm, envir damp, warm environments are best. Well, hello, sounds a lot like the mouth, doesn't it? And also the number one factor that limits growth of mold is a lack of moisture. And that's a big thumbs up for dry storage for all dental appliances, not just sports mouth guards. And the group looked at factors that cause disease from mold. Inhalation is the most important mechanism. And then comes skin contact and ingestion. Clearly, mold growing on a dental appliance raises red flags for all three, especially as the mouth is the gateway to the lungs and the gut. Also noted, was that repeated exposure can sensitize people who can then experience hay fever symptoms and even asthma. And then expert advice on how to prevent molds. Well, wash surfaces with soap and water, disinfect with a mild bleach, and then allow to air dry. Additionally, and this could be funny if it wasn't so serious, people doing the cleaning of the floors and walls should be wearing rubber boots and gloves and goggles probably an overkill when washing our dental appliances, but certainly an indication we need to take this issue far more seriously. Embarrassingly, even the American Home Brewers Forum takes this issue more seriously uh, with their EVA tubes than we do sports mouth guards hy hygiene. They are all over the issue of preventing mold in their tubes, so the beer remains uncontaminated. Happily, a separate report showed that mold doesn't affect the physical or protective properties of EVA. Now let us turn our attention to aligners, which are made from a few different materials, but one popular setup is a bilaminate of polyurethane and copolyester. Polyurethane is an interesting material, very hard, very smooth and scratch resistant. And it's most, uh, most often used on the soles of shoes, floor coatings and car parts. The other layer is copolyester, which we understand from outside the dental world has a high resistance to shrinking, most chemicals, abrasion, and moths. So what is the difference between copolyester and plain old polyester? Well, let's get an explanation from, tennis reviewer, from the Tennis Reviewer website, which explains that copoly is simply polyester with a few extra chemicals, and it is often preferred for tennis strings because Straight polyester strings snap back quickly into place, achieving maximum topspin and more control. However, this snap significantly increases the incidence of tennis elbow. Copoly is still tough, but less snap and therefore less tennis elbow. 
How do, how do they clean uh, polyester? Well, the clothing industry says warm water and detergent, and the furniture industry recommends a damp cloth, soap and water for polyurethane coatings. Okay, well, nylon now becoming very popular and also an amazing tough material. Another synthetic fibre that comes from petrochemicals, and we learned from the American Oil and Gas Society that it was first developed by DuPont in 1935. And one of its first uses was to replace the hog bristle toothbrush with nylon. So, you know, thank goodness for that. American journalist Shannon Corbell wrote an interesting article in 2020 with the shocking title, Nylon, the reason we won the war and started shaving our legs. She was of course refers, referring to WW2 and describes how in the 1930s, the United States imported four fifths of the world's silk and 90% of it came from Japan. 75 to 80% of that was used for women's silk stockings. Unfortunately, these stockings didn't stretch. They were delicate and ripped easily. Then along came DuPont, who immediately recognized the opportunity for nylon stockings, which were an immediate hit. All 4,000 pairs sold within three hours at their experimental debut. The next year, 4 million pairs were sold within two days. But then along came the war and the nylon was diverted to the military because it was strong and tough and durable. The women sadly missed their stockings, so started doing the next best thing. They shaved their legs and applied a type of paint. A bold new revolution was happening as hair removal to mimic the appearance of stockings and this trend continues today, inflamed by the beauty industry. Miss Corbell does reassure us that stockings did make a comeback. And cleaning recommendations for nylon outside of dentistry, cold water, never use bleach and drip dry. So when our patients go looking for information on dental appliance hygiene that they did not receive or forgot they received, what are they learning online from the dental industry? And a warning, this is where things start to get a bit messed up. One of the very first information sources that comes up if you Google, how do I clean my dentures, is from the otherwise well-respected Mayo Clinic, which advises correctly to remove dentures from the mouth. So clearly some patients aren't even hearing or understanding that message. Important to protect against dropping with a towel or water in the sink soft brush, non-abrasive denture cleaner, then soak dentures with water or mild soaking solution overnight to stop dentures drying out and losing their shape. And of course, rinse de dentures very thoroughly in the morning as these soaking solutions are toxic and can cause vomiting, pain or burns if swallowed, possibly why some people are avoiding soaking. Coming up second was advice from everydayhealth.com. The standard warning for towel or water in the basin, which is actually really important because we see every day in general practice, broken and chipped dentures and splints from dropping. You can use a nail brush, they say, with salt or baking soda, or you can simply brush the dentures with hand soap or dishwashing liquid. I do like the idea of soap and we'll take a closer look at the science behind this later. A very quick note on the nail brush idea. I'm not a fan. Uh, it's okay for most lower full dentures, but for me, it doesn't get down into the undercuts and the tooth indentations for most other appliances very well. And the bristles tend to grab at metal clasps. clasps. But I suggest you try it yourself if you are supporting this uh, recommendation in the clinic. Then we do have this added recommendation that when nothing else is available, then you can use free air as oxygen can kill yeast and many other bacteria. And therefore leaving your dentures on a dry surface overnight can help disinfect them. It is a misconception that dentures need store, to be stored in water. So we already have mixed messaging in the first couple of most popular Google searches. And then close behind comes healthline.com and we are back to soaking to prevent warping and wisely a warning not to put your dentures in boiling water. Let's now move to the Invisalign website for aligners, and I'm happy to report this is far more thorough and no doubt research tested, and we see their cleaning system crystals contain soap, which we will see later is very good 
and relies, uh, and the crystals rely on dissolving uh, in water uh, and a container and then shaking. Leave it sit for 15 plus minutes, then shake again for 20 seconds before rinsing thoroughly with warm water. Next up for aligners, uh, in Australia at least, is Orthodontics Australia, uh, the Orthodontics Australia website, which recommends a gentle antibacterial soap or dishwashing liquid. Use a spare toothbrush to mechanically disturb the biofilm. And then of course, to rinse thoroughly. You can use denture cleaning tablets as directed also. And at, at the very least, your aligners, um, rinse your aligners under warm water twice a day when you brush your teeth. Let's now move to what our patients will find on our professional body websites. The Australian Dental Association on denture hygiene, brush twice a day with soap, soak dentures daily, leave dentures out at night, store dry, regular checkups. The ADA on sports mouthguard hygiene, wash with soap and cold water, uh, clean inner surface with a soft toothbrush or nail brush after wearing. Good luck getting that down into uh, those indentations and then store in clean, rigid and ventilated plastic container and keep well away from sunlight and heat. The American Dental Association website advises rinse food particles and remove denture adhesive, soak as per manufacturer's instructions, cleaning pastes and gels should be brushed on and rinsed off, store in water so as to retain shape and keep it from drying out. Dentures can be cleaned with toothpaste or soap, soapy warm water and a soft bristle brush. Canadian Dental Association is quite brief, but yes, dentures can collect plaque and tar tartar, take them out at night, soak them overnight in a special denture cleaner or in warm water and vinegar, half and half, but not if it has metal clasps. Use warm water only, which will loosen the plaque and the calculus. And we do know the old home remedy to use vinegar, and this is because it's very acidic, around a pH of three, hence it needs watering down. And it works because anything under a pH of 5.6 will dissolve calculus. And that's good, except you've ever, if you've ever tried it, and I have with my night guard, then everything tastes like vinegar and smells like vinegar. Later, we will introduce you to Dental Fresh with a very gentle pH of 5.0, which will also dis dissolve and importantly prevent calculus uh, or tartar and leave your appliance fresh and smelling like peppermint. 2018 Global Task Force advises daily cleaning with a mechanical action using a toothbrush or denture brush, non-abrasive denture cleaner, daily soaking, leave dentures out at night. Soaking in a denture cleanser solution after mechanical cleaning seems to be beneficial for preventing denture stomatitis and the potential risk of pneumonia for the frail and institutionalized. A recall and maintenance program is important. So now let's look at some of the science and the research. What do the therapeutic guidelines have to say about denture care? Soap has been mentioned quite a few times, but how does it actually work? And why is this important? And then what does the science say about brushing, soaking and storage, wet versus dry? So the therapeutic guidelines are compiled by real experts in their field and are fiercely independent. So if you don't mind, I will read this out verbatim as it's uh, all pretty good stuff. Dentures should be regularly cleaned twice a day to remove food particles and plaque. Advise patients to remove dentures from the mouth and clean them with warm water, mild soap and a toothbrush, denture brush or soft nail brush. Avoid cleaning dentures with hot water, toothpaste, kitchen detergents, laundry bleaches, methylated spirits, antiseptics or abrasives, unless instructed by a dental practitioner. Patients should clean their gums and remaining teeth with a soft toothbrush and toothpaste. Advise patients to place dentures in a dry environment overnight after cleaning them. Traditionally, it was recommended that dentures were kept in liquid overnight. However, allowing the cleaned denture to dry out at night is more effective for reducing yeast colonization and plaque accumulation, compared with both denture cleansers and water. Although repeated cycles of hydration and dehydration can change the shape of the denture, these changes are small 
and not clinically significant. Highlighted then, dentures should be cleaned, then placed in a dry environment at night. If there is a buildup of hard deposits, tartar or calculus, dentures can be soaked overnight in a solution of white vinegar, diluted one in four, then cleaned as usual. Advise patients to see their dentist for professional cleaning if hard deposits cannot be removed. Denture associated stomatitis is prevented by regular cleaning of the dentures and storing them in a dry environment overnight. Advise patients with denture stomatitis uh, to optimize their denture hygiene and it can take one month for symptoms to improve. So we've heard the recommendation from the experts and the science, uh, and this, but this is actually how soap works. The soap molecules have a tail, which is attracted to dirt and all the things that collect and grow on your removable appliance. And the polar end or head end is soluble in water and will lift the dirt away when we rinse with fresh water, which I per thinks, personally think is pretty amazing and certainly easy for our patients to understand. Okay, so what are some of our brush on soap options? Curaprox have their daily denture gel and Steridant has a denture paste, both which, uh, both which have uh, SLS or sodium laurel sulfate, which is actually just a type of soap. The Steridant denture paste can also be used for natural teeth, uh, the packet says, and contains some titanium dioxide. So sounds a bit like toothpaste. And then we have Dr. Mark's Dental Fresh, which contains a soap molecule derived from coconut and cornstarch. A little more on Dental Fresh. Uh, we have targeted dental appliances specifically by adjusting the pH to a mild 5.0, which is about the same as a banana, uh, but more importantly, is well below the critical 5.6 required to dissolve uh, calculus or tartar. Ideally, patients start using Dental Fresh on their dental appliances from the day they are fitted, and this will help prevent stains or calculus developing in the first place. We much prefer and advocate for a preventive care approach. But the above before and after photos show that what we call an appliance rescue, which we can achieve for neglected appliances uh, with a, a regular twice daily use of dental fresh over a two week uh, period. Uh, and you can leave the soap foam on a little bit longer in such cases before rinsing off. We've also added a surfactant to promote rapid drying and pure peppermint oil for its mild, mild antibacterial property, but also so that the appliance is not just left sparkling clean, but also smelling fresh. Dental Fresh is also uh, great for tooth whitening trays and getting all that used gel out. Just a slow, gentle action with the brush. And if you like, you can leave the soap suds uh, on for a, a few minutes before rinsing off with fresh water. Okay, so now we have a good idea about dental soap options. Now let's look at dental specific brush options. Well, the old brush options uh, haven't really changed, as I said before in the introduction, in 50 years, and they are really just a modified toothbrush, which we know has a small head and a long handle, which is perfect for cleaning teeth inside the mouth. But we're not cleaning our appliances inside the mouth. We are washing them outside the mouth held in our fingers and over a sink or basin. The first thing you will notice about the Sure Grip is that the bristles are relatively soft, but very tough. And the telescopic tips are engineered and measured to bend and fit and squeeze near every little space or tooth indentation and around undercuts and clasps to disturb the biofilm as they wash and polish the appliance. And I can tell you from personal experience, it will leave a splint sparkling clean but also gentle enough to wash out your tooth whitening stents. And it also covers a lot more surface area than a toothbrush head. So there is, uh, they're far more efficient uh, time-wise. The handle is also fashioned on a typical doorknob and therefore more ergonomic, hence the name Sure Grip, and can be used in a rotary polishing action and not just a back and forward scrubbing action. And we do need to mention that there is this universal warning uh, to lay down a protective towel or half fill a basin in case you drop your appliance. And we know people do drop their appliances, but I wonder how many patients actually follow uh, this advice. And this was one of the very early driving factors for me to develop the hygiene. 
I wanted to lock the appliance uh, in so it couldn't be dropped during daily plaque control. And this is what it looks like pulled apart. And you can see five brushes on the top, five brushes on the bottom that work on the appliance simultaneously inside this ventilated protective casing. It also comes with replacement brushes, which we recommend are flipped every three to four months, the same as you would recommend changing your toothbrush. So if you determine that protected washing is clinically indicated for your patient, or there is a history of dropping and breaking the dental appliance, then hygiene should be considered as a viable recommendation. I thought it was also important to acknowledge this very interesting 2014 study that showed much higher levels of candida growing on the fingertips of patients who had dentious dermatitis. And this led to a recommendation that patients with removable dental appliances should be further informed as to the importance of proper denture and personal hygiene and the link between contamination of the hands and other parts of the body. And clearly this represents another indication to consider hygiene uh, with the uh, dental appliances not being uh, handheld. Back to the science again, and this 2016 study looked at ultrasonic versus mechanical brushing and determined that neither system removed all plaque completely and that the results for both were similar. Porosities in the denture resin contributed to this result. And this French study, 2011 in Paris, shows improved denture hygiene over a two week period with supervised denture hygiene. But we can see on the bottom image that some biofilm still remains. So this tells us that more is needed than simply brushing with soap or toothpaste, that more turns out to be dry storage and some level of intermittent soaking with an antibacterial solution, we, as we will soon learn. However, the next step is in our process to, is to look at denture adhesives. And we again rely on G the GSK funded task force and Oral Health Foundation it concluded quite sensibly that dental professions, professionals should instruct their patients on its correct use and on removing it daily and cleaning the denture. Pastes and gels work better than denture strips and that unfortunately none of the cleaning techniques recommended by the manufacturers was completely effective. The task force also recommended applying the denture adhesive creams to an already clean and dry denture. Before sleep, the denture should be removed and both the denture and oral cavity should be cleaned of any remaining adhesive. Quick note on soft linings reported in this dental update 2019, rinse denture after each meal, soft brush and soak in an alkaline hypochlorite solution for 10 minutes and dry storage. Okay, now a study that looked at mechanical brushing uh, and wet storage with a soaking tablet in a Belgian aged care or long-term facility. The, result, the results showed basically a reduction in bacteria, but no effect on candida albicans. If we then turn to a study of 30 fully edentulous patients in Japan, well, in this study, a combination of brushing with water only and then soaking in saline versus the same brushing, but soaking in a denture cleanser, in this case, Polydent Fresh Cleanse, which is peroxide based and also contains a detergent. The second method was proven superior, but look at the brushing time of two minutes every day for three weeks. I'm not sure even the most compliant patient would brush their denture for two minutes, but it did prove that soaking in the Polydent uh, Cleanse did improve the outcome. And here are some of the soaking options available. Do your research and at least pick one and promote it to your patients. This paper determined that a hypochlorite solution of 0.5% for 10 minutes was best to actually remove biofilm, but also reported an alkaline peroxide solution must be immersed for 30 minutes to produce a cleansing effect similar to brushing with soap and water. Just rinsing under the tap is useless, as you would expect, and I would suggest this is the same for all dental appliances. We by now understand the importance of at least intermittent soaking or, uh, of dental appliances in an antibacterial solution of some kind, 
but we really do also need to touch on and acknowledge the very real dangers of these serious chemicals. When recommending, it is incumbent on you to warn of the dangers. Mayo Clinic and the FDA both warn that if not rinsed off completely, then there is a potential damage to the esophagus, abdominal pain, burns, breathing problems, low blood pressure, seizures, bleaching of tissues, internal bleeding or vomiting. And the globally respected oral, uh, knowledge oral health care, and I totally agree, discourage the soaking tablets in dementia situations. And I'll add this is not just aged care. Uh, you will need to keep them locked away at home. And you can see this very sad article when a, um, an antibacterial tablet was swallowed by a gentleman who suffered dementia. And this very recent 2021 independent study really shocked me when it tested the effect on the surface roughening of popular soaking solutions on acrylic when used as per manufacturer's protocol. From these images, we can see clearly the hypochlorite is most aggressive in attacking the surface of your appliance. But fair to say that all chemicals will affect the surface roughness to some degree, so we must keep this in mind and make sure our patients don't oversoak. So let's now road test some popular brands, actually all a little bit different, and I strongly recommend you test these yourself, but especially if you provide splint therapy or aligners, actually they are all quite pleasant and close to neutral pH. The photo on the right is of my dad, age 91, and he gives the thumbs up to the Curaprox weekly soak with eucalyptus. Soaking vessels, well, take your pick. I will point out that the Hygiene comes with its own travel case, which also acts as a soaking vessel, and you can see the watermark on its side. Now, now dry storage still seems to be a confusing issue for some, so let's look at some of the old and new science. Way back in 1986 and reported in JDent, it was also a subject often ignored, but the question was asked regarding dry wet storage and possible dimensional change. The result, it was proven that dry storage did actually kill candida and that dimensional change was insignificant. Of course, this would also be a relief to the sailors in their submarines. And this backed up uh, more recently by a 2020 Canadian study that looked at overnight storage. It concluded that cleaning and dry storage are best. However, if there is no hygiene at all, then soaking in an alkaline solution should be considered or just dry storage alone. It did show that simply storing in water may actually promote oral thrush. And further supported again in this 2020 study reported in the Journal of Gerontology, clean dentures twice a day and to store dry. And to highlight the need to leave dentures out at night, let's look at the study in Japan and reported again in JDent that advises that wearing a denture during the night literally doubles the chances of pneumonia for our elderly. Proper storage is also very important for sports mouthguards. This article in the International Journal of Oral Science showed that after brushing and rinsing, no bacteria were detected when stored two days or longer in a ventilated environment. But when stored in a closed container, bacteria were detected for up to 14 days. So given the importance of storage, let's now move in that direction. I totally get these are a cheap option, but they have uh, zero ventilation or near zero ventilation, and they are perfect for incubating mold. Safe, dry, ventilated storage is critical so that we don't undo the hygiene thread by storing our appliance in a cesspool. And here are two purpose designed options in the Dr. Mark's range. After washing your appliance in the hygiene and rinsing off, Simply set and forget as it's all self, it all self dries and also provides protected and ventilated storage. We also have the cage on the right for your sports mouth guard and hooks onto the side of your backpack or sports bag. Of course, the cage can also be used for all other appliances. So now that we have heard from the real experts and look at the science, we can now pull all of these threads together and determine 
how to deliver oral hygiene instruction chairside so our patients can connect with our message, which is easy to understand and is affordable. Discuss with your patients firstly mechanical biofilm disruption with a soft brush, all surfaces, twice a day using a soap based gel and rinsing with fresh water. If not using hygiene, then of course there is a need to lay down a towel or put a few inches of water in the basin. Soak at least a couple of times a week with one of the antibacterial solutions for between 10 and 30 minutes. Again, very important to rinse thoroughly and then dry, ventilated, safe storage. Have some written instructions prepared as a handout and remind the, pa the patient or the parent of the patient to bring their appliance to every recall visit. So what does that look like? Important to show and tell with your patient's chair side, mechanical brushing twice a day with a soft, flexible, but tough brush. Use a soap-based product with fresh running water, not toothpaste. Soak at least twice a week for 15 to 30 minutes with one of these or as indicated by the manufacturer. Then dry, safe, ventilated storage is so important. Now, sports mouth guard hygiene. Uh, let's start with the transport to and from the game. Uh, a product I haven't talked about yet is Quick Clean. In essence, it is a pre wash sanitizing spray to use immediately after the game and before your guard goes back into the cage. It contains a wetting agent to stop the saliva and dirt and any other yuckies from drying out and becoming crusty uh, on your appliance, as well as having a mild sanitizing effect, has a pH of 6.2, which is the same as many of the dry mouth gels and sprays. When you get home after the game though, we now need to give your sports guard the full treatment with mechanical brushing, uh, ideally with Hygiene Sport to cover all surfaces every time, but you can use the Shure Grip. Applying the soap-based Dental Fresh, rinse with fresh water and of course dry storage and again after discussing and demonstrating this hygiene routine have some written instructions prepared as a handout and remind patients or the parent of the patient to bring the mouth guard to every recall visit and please our products uh, are not just for high performance professional athletes they are for, from everyone uh, young to the old so in conclusion, please let's set up and incorporate best practice hygiene instructions for all removable dental appliances, certainly when we issue them, and then again at every recall visit, and within your existing preventative care and active maintenance programs, and it takes less than 60 seconds. Thank you. All right, Dr. Wotherspoon, thank you so much. Amazingly interesting program, uh, it really is. I don't know whether you're a dentist or a technician or really anyone who plays sports, wears uh, removable appliances. This was an eye-opener, so thank you for that. My that pleasure. Um, so for more information uh, about, about the system, uh, Dr. Mark's Hygiene products, uh, just visit uh, Whitmix website, uh, Whitmix.com, www.whitmix.com, uh, or call our, our toll-free number 800-626-5651, uh, and we'll get somebody on the phone to uh, to talk with you about the product, and uh, you'll learn even more about it. Uh, also, I just want to repeat a couple things I said at the beginning, that if you are in need of CE credit, uh, this is worth one hour toward that, whether you're a dentist or a technician, CDT, uh, you will find out in about 24 hours or so, maybe up to 48 hours, uh, exactly how we'll be able to send you that credit. Uh, and a reminder that this was recorded, this webinar was recorded, and uh, it will be on the Whitmix website in the webinar section, of course, and will also be in uh, the Whitmix uh, YouTube channel. So after a day or two, it takes a couple days to get it up, uh, you'll be able to see that uh, anytime, rewatch it or have any of your friends, peers, uh, co-workers 
watch watch it as well. So I'd like to take a moment to uh, to to just mention something that it has nothing at all to do with with hygiene and uh, and our appliances, but I just want uh, removable appliances. But I just want to make mention that um, this year in October, Whitmix is uh, is having our 10th annual digital forum. And I just want to put it out there. Uh, it's October 28th and 29th uh, in Louisville, Kentucky. And um, there's some fantastic speakers uh, presenting some of the most important topics today in the digital realm uh, of dentistry. And I uh, would like to invite you to, to learn more about it and uh, join us. It's always an amazing event and, and we'd love to have you with us there. So just either call or visit our website uh, with the address I mentioned earlier, and uh, we'll tell you more about that. So Dr. Wilderspoon, once again, thank you so much for, for presenting. Uh, it was a great presentation, and uh, I think everybody on here would agree uh, that it was wonderful for us. So thank Bernie, you. There are some questions. If you could jump to the questions panel, oh, please. Uh, oh, those are, they came up. Okay, I'm, thank you, Chelsea. Um, any thoughts on composite light cured resin for three D printed resin? I guess. Yeah, I mean it's it's the, the number of PWMA options available these days is is outstanding, and certainly seems you know three D printing seems to be the it's it's here now. It's certainly the future. It's very very exciting, but at the end of the day, it's still the same material just in a different form. So you know, my from what I've been able to gather, it's it's the same oral hygiene routine, whether you're, you know, heat curing your acrylic or whether you're 3D printing, uh, additive, reductive, uh, the, the, the hygiene, the home care hygiene principles uh, remain the same, in, in my opinion, um, would be how I'd answer that. I'm not sure if that answers the question or not, but certainly printing is, uh, you know, the future. I don't think we'll be curing acrylics for much longer. It could very well be. Uh, the next question is, uh, there is a device made by Renfert, uh, which is an in-office denture cleaner. It's like a tumbler with beads in it. Can you comment on this product? Look, I, I'm, I read that and I'm excited to have a look at it. I, I don't, uh, I'm not familiar with the Renfert, but I, I certainly like the idea of it. I think anything that has some level of mechanical effect on the biofilm uh, is, is going to be a positive for the patient. Um, and, uh, and, and our products, and, and I think anything that's an adjunct to home care. So when people are in, uh, in my practice, we put them in an ultrasonic bath and, and give them the full work over. Uh, but uh, the, the hygiene products are more for that daily home care. So what people can do safely uh, at home. But I'm, I'm looking forward to, to looking at the Renfert um, Tumblr, which I think sounds like an amazing option. Um, that I'm not aware of. Okay. Uh, the last question is, thank you for your lecture. I have a question regarding the hygiene instruction of dentures with soft line material. Could you say, could you say the best hygiene option again, please? Yeah, so it needs, to, there, it, there was one slide on uh, soft linings, which uh, essentially uh, we have to be incredibly careful with the soft lining materials. So the, the recommendation um, in, in the uh, that was supported by the British Dental Journal was basically a very soft brush um, and then a gentle soak in a peroxide solution for uh, 10 minutes and then dry storage. So, uh, you know, I think you have to be incredibly, depending on the material, and again, there are a few of them, um, we have to be incredibly careful and they should, we prefer them to be short term options uh, while you're preparing the soft tissues for a final impression or, or to get somebody, um, you know, out of immediate trouble. So they should be, and, and as we know, they're usually a short term option, which can become a long term option if, um, if patients choose that, but yeah, they collect, they collect biofilm very quickly. Okay, thank you. That was the last question. So we, once again, I thank you very much for your time and a great presentation. And I, I hope we'll all, we'll see all of you again at, a, at an, a, another uh, webinar by Whitmix. And uh, thank you.
We'll see you all soon. Take care.